aka Crasher, and... Cosmo! Woohoo! And ladies and gentlemen, today we have ourselves a very interesting video for you guys lined up. And this revolves around the legend himself, the Chinese Riddler. And recently, the Chinese Riddler has been making some waves in the Pokemon community. And we're going to talk about them in this video here. And we're going to do the best we can to come up with our own interpretations of what each of these riddles and clues mean. So, with that being said, are you ready? Yep. I hope you're ready too. Let's, Let's get underway, this. ladies and gentlemen. Also remember to take this with a pinch of salt until we actually get confirmation if any of what we're gonna be talking about here is true. Let's do this. Okay, so let us begin with the First tweet from the Chinese Riddler sells a couple of images attached. What do you think of these two pairs? And we do have some pretty interesting dynamics going on. We sells the male protagonist from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl being paired with the female protagonist from Pokemon Legends Arceus and vice versa in the second image with the male protagonist from Pokemon Legends Arceus being paired with the female protagonist from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Very interesting indeed, but what would be your input there, little Cosmog? I wonder about the significance of the pairings. Are we gonna encounter, for instance, the male protagonist from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl if we pick the female protagonist in Legends Arceus and Vice Versa? Could it be related to time travel? I kind of wonder about that myself. I mean, when we think of time traveling and Pokemon, we think of Celebi. However, however, and this is a big however, what is a Pokemon that is known as the ruler of time and seen it in action before? Dialga. So we are talking about Gen 4 here, and Dialga is a Gen 4 legendary Pokemon, so maybe we have ourselves some type of a uh, little situation going on where time travel could be involved when it comes to this right here but we don't know this right here is a sh just a stab in the dark ride moving on to the second chinese riddler tweet so as far as we know suppose that 10 wardens in total all deduced from recent hints and official announcements and we have an image attached right here and there is quite a bit going on so as we see in the top left corner we have ourselves a pair of question marks that is the symbol of a warden and a pokemon which we know nothing about then we have ourselves Hisuian Braviary and a question mark beside it. We don't know the Warden, but we know the Pokemon paired with it. Then we have ourselves one of the Wardens paired with a Weirdier. We have another Warden paired with Cleavor. We have the weird silhouette rock climbing looking Pokemon paired with an unknown Warden. We also see a couple of other completely unknown pairs. We also end up seeing the Basque Legion paired with a Warden. We have ourselves a Rizu paired with what I guess is a lady-like sort of Pokemon. That right there is very, very interesting. We also have ourselves what appears to be a bear type of creature-like Pokemon paired with a another unknown Warden. And the question mark at the top, this right here is what really piques my interest. We have a singular question mark, and, and I believe this right here could very well signify Arceus, or maybe an Arceus form, or something completely different that we don't know about. What are your thoughts? It might just be the final boss of the game, per se. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, honestly, there's a lot going on here, and this right here very, very much excites me. So, definitely leave your input down below if you make it up to this point. I would love to hear out what it is you guys have to say about this. So, moving on to the next slide, we have ourselves this new helpful version of something you already know. And we have ourselves a trio of images that definitely pique my interest. 
The first of which showcases a circle with a trio of arrows that's pointing in the southwestern direction. The next image we have here is a very creepy, ghoulish looking type of thing going on. We see a lot of humans slash spirits slash entities slash pretty much whatever you want to call them. Very, very creepy. Yo, guys. And last but not least, we have ourselves what appears to be some type of warrior or samurai wielding a sword or katana. He is the character from Demon Slayer. What are your thoughts about this? Well, I'm getting some uh, traditional RPG archetypes kind of vibes, like you've got the warrior, the mage, and the archer. Okay, okay. So, that is interesting for sure, and given the fact that Pokemon Legends Arceus is taking place in a feudal era, this right here, when it comes to what you just said, could very well be a thing, since how these right here are traditional, their long-time sort of styles that are very, very well known inside the gaming universe and outside as well. Definitely a very interesting thing to take away from this. Next up, we have ourselves this right here. They share some similarities, and we have ourselves Persian, Kofagrigus, and Weavile. Now, right from the jump, I think I have an idea on what this here could mean, because check me out on this. So, Persian is a Pokemon that has been blessed with having new regional forms, especially when it comes to its pre-evolution being Meowth. We have regular Meowth, we have Gigantamax Meowth, we have Alolan Meowth, and we have ourselves Galarian Meowth, and Persian has an Alolan form. As for Kofagrigus, its pre-evolution known as Yamask also has a Galarian form that has an entirely new evolution in Rune Rigus. And we have Weavile here, and if all of the chips are beginning to line up here, you want to finish this off, my brother. If I were to extrapolate, I would say Weavile's pre-evolution, Sneezo, is going to have a new form together with a completely different evolution. <laughs> and there has been speculations that that rock climbing Pokemon might very well be that Pokemon. That could very well be the case because when it comes to any type of mountain or ice climbing period, what are one of the tools that is needed? You definitely need something sharp to dig into the cliffside so you don't fall. And given the fact that Sneasel and Weavile, at least as far as everything we know about them so far, have very sharp hook-like claws that could dig into things that those claws get into. So maybe just maybe you might be onto something here, but we'll leave that up to you guys to decide that in the comments down below and tell us what you think about this. Moving on here, we have ourselves Centro stole this pick from- oh geez, a little bit of shade there to Centro. <clears throat> Anyways, I digress. Uh, I will break them all now. Actually, they are all based on Japanese puns and culture, mixed with a little bit of Asian stuff. However, some thief knew nothing and put it out in the English community how stupid and ridiculous someone was. Yikes, but I can't really blame them too much, if I'll be honest. Anyways, we have ourselves a dozen, literally, of images here. So let's begin with the first image right here, a yokai from Yokai watch her japanese name is the key once you know it you will understand all about this mon and we have ourselves someone that replied to this right here and we have ourselves the following hayaki hime i hope i said that right is the name for people who don't know she uses ice and dark slash ghost powers in the anime so that could be the type i think it's obvious who it will be now and would you like to finish this off my brother the only ice ghost type I can think of is Frostless. Yep. So maybe just maybe we could have a new Frostlass form or something within the Frostlass family. That would be very, very cool because Frostlass does have a really, really nice design. So it would be nice to see the ghoulish ice queen get some love. 
And if I were to go out on a stretch, could it actually be something new entirely with that typing? <laughs> Maybe. Like, you know what? Like, th this right here, like, nothing is impossible. But I will say, honestly, like, you could be onto something. You definitely could be onto something, man. Whether it's a new form of Frostlass, maybe it's a new pre-evolution of something else. Who knows, really? Like, this this is interesting. So now, let's move on to the next slide. Number two, check out the recent official announcement. And we have ourselves a reply here. Zoro is the green-haired guy's name. Zoro is in the name Zoroark. So... I think that right there is pretty damn obvious, especially with what was revealed the other day. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, pretty straightforward, I think. Yep, Hisuian Zoroa and Zoroark. So number three, we have ourselves this. New Poke, one of the post-game contents, and this right here is referencing the pair of Cloudy Hearts linked together. That is very interesting. What do you think? I wonder if it's a clue to its typing. Maybe. Like, maybe it's a flying type scenes how clouds are in the sky. Or a water ice type. Who knows, honestly. This right here is one of them things that's pretty, uh, pretty hard to kind of decipher, but who knows, man? Who knows? We do know that it is a new Pokemon, and it's one of the post-game content type of new Pokemon. Number four, a no-brainer. Yeah, this right here, I think we can put two and two together. I think this right here is referencing Hisuian, Voltorb, and Electrode. And it's actually funny, we did a video speculating about that in the past, didn't we? Yeah, and that's why it's a no-brainer. Absolutely. Okay, number five. Now, this one here interests me. That Lady Noble Poke, and we have ourselves the image of the anime girl that is blushing, and this right here, I'm willing to bet, is the Pokemon that Warden Arizu is in charge of, because that Lady Noble Pokemon, and yeah, I mean, it seems pretty obvious, but what do you think? The first thing that comes to mind is a new form for Gardevoir, but we did see regular Gardevoir in one of the recent trailers, so mm -hmm. that might, um, that will be a little trickier. Yeah, I mean, we know that this right here is a ladylike Pokemon, and there are a few ladylike Pokemon that we can think of, such as the likes of Gardevoir, such as the likes of Vespaquin, such as the likes of Serena, as well as Jinx, and I'm probably missing a few others, but... Honestly, this right here is going to be very, very interesting to figure out as we get more information. All right, moving on. Number six, Kodori. Asian fans will know what it was immediately, and we have ourselves a reply here saying that Kodori is a character from Love Live. The characters for Small Bird, hence quite possibly being the sign for Rallet, and we have the image of the anime girl's head attached to a buff, muscular, muscle-bound body. My god. I'm, a, I'm gonna let you take this one, man. What do you think? Well, judging from the clue, I think it might be a safe bet to say that DC Joy might be a fighting type. It's possible. I mean... We could very well be in for a brand new Decidueye sort of form, or or a new form altogether that's evolved from Rallet. A split evolution. Who knows? Maybe. Wow. This this right here, man. Now now we're getting into the good stuff. Now my juices are really starting to flow. All right. Moving on, number seven, kanji on this pick is the key. Only Japanese can get it when that poke gets revealed. And we have ourselves a reply that says, and I quote, kanji, needle equals Harry, beards, and Kamado, and form Hariyama. And the image right here showcases that cactus-like enemy from the Final Fantasy games. This is interesting, especially when we have Hariyama being thrown into the mix here. A beer from Hariyama? Maybe. But we also have ourselves uh, the reference of uh, cacti and needles as well, so... I, I, it's it's honestly hard to say, like, a cactus like Hariyama? What, what, what the hell? That would be... 
That would be one interesting thing to visualize. What the hell? I don't even know what else can be said about this. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny now that I'm picturing that. All right, number eight. A new variant can tell the type from it, and yes, we can actually. We see that it is a silver or steel sort of material, and we see that it is in the shape of a snail or some type of escargot. So, a steel snail slash escargot-esque type of Pokemon. Right from the jump, a few Pokemon, or at least lines that come to mind, would be the Shellos line, the Gumi line, and the Slugma line, seeing how they all have some sort of resemblance to Mollusk slash Escargos. What about you? Some people who commented on the tweet actually speculated that it could be a new form or even evolution for the Unsparse. <gasps> oh! What?! Gusparse! You mean the Pokemon that, in my honest opinion, has been the most neglected throughout the, the generations. The most underloved. Yes! The most underloved! So, if if this is the case, like, you can't see it, but I am frothing out the mouth and I got the intensity written all over my damn face. If we have ourselves, Dunsparce, getting an evolution, or at the very minimum, getting a new form, I am going to flip straight out. I am going to flip, and it's going to be an exciting time for us Dun Sparse fans. You can believe that. All right, number nine, a Japanese pun. When you solve it, you know the type of one starter. And a reply to that tweet, it's more like Moonlight equals Gekko, Moth equals Ga, hence Gekoga, Greninja in Japanese. So it refers to a water dark samurai. And we have ourselves the image of the moon and the moth. I think this right here is pretty straightforward, unless I am missing something in my crazy brain. Uh, do you have any blanks to fill in, my brother? Gekko ga, come back to me. Oh my god, do not channel your inner wrath. Oh, Gekko ga, come back to me. I love you, I miss you, Gekko ga. Oh, okay, 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 okay. This one right here, very interesting. Number 10, this poke was based on this thing visually, and yeah, that is a damn aircraft carrier. Now, I would be really, really intrigued to see a Pokemon of that shape and size, because you know those aircraft carriers are big, they are big. But you know another Pokemon that is very big, and I mean big, that being Wailor. So, maybe we could have ourselves a different variation of Wailord or a Whalemur evolution that is in the shape of an aircraft carrier, but, but, there is another thing that you actually mentioned to me behind the scenes as to what this right here could mean, and it comes from Gen 8. What do you gotta say, baby? When we think aircraft carrier, Dragapult comes to mind immediately, doesn't he? Yes, it does, and here's why. Because it has living dreepies in its little missile launchers, so those launchers happen to be the carriers of those dreepy missiles. I mean, it might seem like a bit of a far-fetched type, uh, type of thing, but you know what? You never, never know. And this right here is just our own interpretations and speculations on what this could mean. All right, number 11. Okay, this right here involves the image from the manga. Now, okay, let's see what we have here. Number 11, a Japanese manga, what happened to her is the key. In fact, you must have seen it way earlier than you ever noticed. And we have ourselves a variety of imagery here within these screenshots. And it has something to do with uh, Kamatachi? I hope I said that right. And Kamatachi is a Japanese yokai often told about in the Koshin Etsu region and can also refer to the strange events that this creature causes. They appear riding on dust devils, that's interesting, and they cut people using the nails on both their hands that are like sickles, ouch. One would receive a sharp, painless wound. All right, my brother, you take it away. I see you froth out the mouth about this too. Remember the image earlier we showed Persian? Yes. Carthagrigus? Yes, yes. And Weavile? Yes, yes, yes. This seems to line up with that. You could very well be onto something. 
you could very well be onto something, and this right here further proves, or at least proves to speculate, that we could very well be in for a treat if you are a diehard fan of Sneasel and Weavile. Maybe, just maybe, we could very well get ourselves new forms of these. And I'm, if we do, I'm guessing it might be a rock type or a ground type, considering they appear riding on dust devils. <sighs> man, oh man, alive, man! Like this, this right here is setting my skin on fire. Like I am, I am, I am so freaking excited. Tell us what you think about this in the comments down below. And number twelve, last but not least, twelve. You knew what it was from the thief. That's all. And we have Centro Leaks, Centro Thief, saying there's an Earth Ring Evolution, it's rideable. And this right here is the clownish looking bear. Um, okay, so <laughs> I guess, um, I guess that right there is a reference to an Earth Ring Evolution. Okay. Since Earth Ring is just the second stage Pokemon, it, it could very well get an evolution. I mean, it's not that surfetched. <laughs> what the? Oh my god! You, you and you, you and your freaking puns, man. Although I made a pun earlier, but if Ursaring, as big and powerful and burly of a Pokemon as that is, gets an evolution, just imagine how powerful that thing is going to be. Especially if it has high attack and has the guts ability, man. That's gonna be something else. All right, so this right here was a bit of a doozy to go through, but I hope you guys enjoyed this journey with us. And I know I've said this a few times, but I would love, love, love Disc to hear you guys out in the comments down below about what it is we talked about here in this video, because we would love to hear what you guys have to say and your own interpretations about these riddles from the Chinese Riddler himself. Do you have anything to add to your closing statements before we close things out? Well, that's definitely an interesting series of tweets. I hope we see more, but the game is coming out like in two months. Is it two months? It's coming out January 28th, so yeah, three. three. Yep. I am excited, man. I am beyond excited. Hey, I kind of got the uh, Astro Boy hair kind of going on a little bit, but... Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to wrap things up and we're going to eat as well. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video from a couple of hungry chibis. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and especially comment. Like and subscribe, sorry. Like and subscribe and especially comment down below because you know we love to hear you guys out. Always have. That'll never ever change. Thank you guys again for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day, right? depending on your time zone. And we'll, we'll see, see you guys, guys in the, the next, next one.